Okay. Hey everyone and welcome back to another World of Warcraft video. Today we've got a particularly exciting and definitely not very well slept okay. one because Classic came out last night at 11 p.m. BST and it was quite the event. I stayed up all night playing it and uh, there really just is a lot to talk about, both okay. in terms of the game experience and the first impressions there, but also, and I think uh, a little bit more importantly for tracking the broader story of World of Warcraft, well, just how well it did on a meta perspective, looking at things like Twitch numbers and just its overall performance. Because I still can't believe those that, lumps were me, man. That's ridiculous. Expectations. First, though, let's cover the experience of the launch to fill you in if you weren't there. So. Things were getting pretty damn hyped. The servers were beginning to get their queues, you know, okay. rising and rising and rising. But I'd logged in about two hours beforehand um, into the Enter World screen, and I just stayed there. I used Chrome Remote Desktop to keep that client logged in, which, yeah, might be a bit of a dirty tactic. That's smart, but dude. It meant That's that very as smart. soon as it hit 11 p.m. BST, that enter world button lit up, I hit the go button, and we were pretty much good to go. Now, it wasn't all smooth sailing. The actual login process did take quite some time indeed. That was pretty much just because the world server was struggling to come up, so we were stuck there at that loading screen. But once I did get in, it was okay. exactly what you would expect if you've been on an extremely busy server, like, say, Drano or oh. EU, on a launch day. Everyone spawned in, in my case, in the, in the Valley of Honor, uh, spawned in on top of each other. You couldn't move and it was a little bit messy. Slowly, though, you would gain the ability to move, and then you would just see you and all of the other many, many, many Servers players never crashed at the beginning. The place with them sort of, you know, well, teleporting besides about for the time that they did. You could see them. Besides that, they did Picking didn't up crash. a quest, well, that was no easy feat. It was feat. better than I thought it would go. maybe 10 to 20 seconds, and overall, it was a pretty janky experience. My experience of going around the Valley of Honor was quite funny. The entire place was just absolutely packed with people. And you've got to remember this, too. That was just my layer, because Blizzard are, of course, using layering. There are multiple instances of each, uh, you know, each server sort of layered on top of each other, and that's one of the things they're using for population control on Classic. And even with that, it felt extremely populated. So that was pretty much the experience. And bear in mind, I am playing on Shazrath EU. That basically, I'm, I'm actually, I suspect that might be the most populous WoW Classic server that exists. So... What what I said like last time, I asked people if uh, if that was actually true. Apparently, that server had a uh, fifty or I think it was fifty or a hundred thousand person queue. Like meanwhile, our dead server only has a twenty thousand person queue. So uh, I, I guess EU's got a lot more time to play classic. I actually saw a report of a 100k queue there. I haven't seen that verified anywhere else, and I do know that it's hit, I think, 25k in terms of its queue size, which is pretty darn insane. So, that was the initial experience of the launch of actually hopping in. Before I talk about the gameplay relating topics here, and actually the experience of playing WoW Classic itself, I want to talk about WoW Classic, the, the story, and I mean story, you know, as an industry story what's actually been, you know, going on with it, what that means for the industry, what it means for World of Warcraft, because on that front, it's been, well, pretty colossal. Now, one of our best gauges sure of interest is Twitch.tv numbers. If something mm. is a big cultural event, then that generally will be reflected quite well on Twitch. Really? And that's where we saw World of Warcraft really? be okay. one of, well, basically that makes sense. get one of the highest peaks for a game ever. Okay. Now, there are some games like Fortnite that have went past it, but World of Warcraft absolutely is up there. And even in the top channels you know we were looking through it i think for the last month every single channel was a brand until you hit like i think number 12 who is number 12 asmongold with 286 thousand simultaneous viewers and with world wow. of warcraft getting 1.1 holy shit that's the last 30 days holy shit god damn man god fucking damn oh my god million viewers now wow. here's the deal in battle for azeroth world of warcraft peaked at like 580k Jesus for legion Christ. streaming it's for up, world of warcraft up, was up. a good bit smaller it peaked also, at hey. about 280k hey. now of course you know legion was better than bfa it's not like twitch peak numbers indicates the quality of an expansion or something like that but it yep. certainly is a gauge of interest Morgan. that i think is pretty darn relevant i think especially in comparing bfa to classic because they are in a sort of similar time period with a very similar twitch ecosystem and i think that's especially the case because we're just off the back of the eternal palace now what's really different about wild WoW classic i think what's blinding the 
What the hell? What the hell just happened? Okay, just a second. ...obvious from just looking at the performance is it has went past the Battle for Azeroth player base. It really Obviously. has. It has captured so many more Obviously. people. And when you look at Activision Blizzard's earning calls, pretty much their goal has been to engage the upwards of 100 million World of Warcraft accounts that exist. Holy A pretty shit. staggering number of people on this planet have played WoW at some point, and they were essentially running a massive awareness campaign to get people back in. Across gaming news sites all over the world, WoW Classic was actually performing pretty well. You would have tier lists being published by general gaming news websites that normally would not wow. touch World of Warcraft stuff. And Is that, that actually really true? Just does show you how much Classic managed to expand past that. Is that actually true? I, I didn't even know that. Not much marketing though. Yeah, I feel like everybody is like everybody is marketed classic WoW except for Blizzard. Blizzard are the only people that are not marketing classic WoW. Base Warcraft audience, which really is, you know, you and me, pretty much. It's really getting the people who don't watch videos like the ones that I make, who typically don't watch the, you know, the Twitch streams. It really has blown up to be that larger culture. Yeah, event. everybody fucking now, knows about it, man. How is this all translated Not everybody, to people. people trying to log into servers? Well, we saw averages of about ten and a half thousand in the login Holy queue. Shit, we dude. saw peaks of I think it was like seven hundred and something minutes. I think I feel like if you if you combined all the servers and if each server has everybody's saying that it's taking fifteen thousand uh uh fifteen thousand people per server. You probably had more concurrent players, probably over 1 million concurrent players, at least like 700,000 concurrent players uh, playing Classic WoW. I think that's about what it would be. Cool. You know, I think I saw a thousand and something minutes as the login queue estimate with them um, servers getting up to 27k. Even some of the new shit, servers dude. had login queues. Is that a lot? Yeah, it's a huge amount. were added hours before launch. I mean, from my experience, after the initial 40 minutes of gameplay that I outlined at the top of this video, you know, Shazrath booted everybody off. I then was thrown into a 14k queue where I played Battlestar Galactica Deadlock for, um, you know, three and a half, four hours. Well, maybe three hours until I actually got back, uh, you know, back in the queue. Overall, what this shows us, though, is that right. Classic has performed extremely good. well. And I think it always was going to perform well. I think this is probably exceeding the expectations of most and certainly exceeding the expectations of Blizzard. I think J. Allen Brack got J. Allen whacked when he did his whole, you know, you think you do, but you don't. And yes, he joked at him. J. Allen whacked. I mean, okay, look. Yeah, good one. Good one, dude. Good one, Bellior. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like the, the comment that he made it, it makes sense. A lot of people probably do feel that way. It's just that I think that they kind of underestimated the amount of people that don't. That That's all. I, I, I don't know. I don't think it was as bad of a comment as everybody makes it out to be. Uh, it's crazy. Saying that, uh, you know, when the classic was announced, but uh, certainly he's going to he's going to eat those words for a very, very long time indeed. People think they did, and uh, as it turned out, yeah, they, they really did. Now, what we do need to wait and see is how long this persists after launch. And I suppose that's really what takes us into talking about the gameplay experience of WoW Classic. I think I'll round this off by just a little bit more of a broad discussion about the direction of World of Warcraft. So, my gameplay experience was fairly traditional. I decided to go with zero add-ons or anything like that. That's and right. That's overall, right. Exactly. And overall, it was kind of funny and nostalgic. Yep. I mean, personally, the largest Same launch that me. I ever played was Wrath of the Lich King, and there was actually some direct parallels. You know, I remember killing, trying to kill the NPC in the Borean Tundra mines at the very start of the Alliance. Shows how I touched you on brackets. I don't really think that's entirely true. I mean, like, he could understand. A lot. There are a lot of people. Do you think that most people in the WoW player base right now in BFA want classic more than bfa like most overall people i'm not talking about the people on twitch or youtube but if you pulled every individual that's playing the game yes uh i mean it, it's hard to say let me say that it is very very hard to say i, I don't think it's a simple yes or no questing and you know that was the one named NPC everyone yep. would go there the game didn't have shared tapping you need to group up so of course rolling as a troll I mean you've got that scorpid when you're level four you've got um Zalazane you know, not Zalazane you've got the troll guy in the Echo Isles you've got you know so many NPCs like that where you're in that situation we have to group up with other people and 
that really is it's quite a cool thing and broadly what I noticed the most just going through the maybe five six hours of playing and I mean I only hit level nine and a bit so it was very inefficient a no. lot of that was just because you know you had a bit of lag we were was a shitty lot too of competition it's okay. for mobs I lost a lot of time in the echo Isles. but the one thing that really stood out to me is I grouped up far more just like and this is this is not me grouping up with my friends or with the Stark guys who I'm going to be playing with, um, you know, once I, you know, head up uh, Vanish and get in the guild and all of that stuff. This was just randomers, right? And, you know, this... You like, just play yeah, with random fucking people. You people. make friends. You've got a call. Like, I probably, I probably have known, like, five or six people that I played with in Classic already, and I remember their names better than the last hundred people that I played with in BFA. Outside of, like, people that I stream, uh, that, like, join my stream groups. Like, very, very easily common goal you group up away you go i probably had more social interactions in the five or six hours of playing classic uh, over the night there than i would have had in doing your average battle for azeroth content i mean even sometimes things like doing a mythic dungeon involve just about zero communication with another person it's almost all automated whereas here not really like that now a lot of that is you are forced to group up with other people because yeah. well not forced but you know the game mechanics heavily do like want you to do that because of say the shared tapping on a named mob or just completing a quest faster or their whole you should be forced like i said this hundred times they need to force people to do it because if they don't force people to do it then they're not going to take it seriously they won't do it uh they have to force people if that if they're not forced then it just won't even matter system where i believe um you do kind of get more experience whenever you uh, kill mobs with a group so like if um, i believe the way it works is like if a mob was worth 100 experience and you were a group of two and you both killed that mob you get like 60 each which would total 120 so it's actually faster to play and just to kill things quickly yep. as a group of players yep. but just because of all of those things you don't want to compete for tags that really is just meant that yeah i've been spending more time with people i've seen more natural like interactions happen uh you know things like I mean, one of the, the right way is people actually forming up lines now exactly know, maybe this hasn't been happening in the horde i've seen a lot of alliance screenshots i think in the horde we all just grouped up got in a big pile on top of the you know where the mob would spawn and just mash like tab and some sort of instant ability to try to get a tag on it but uh, we did that yeah, too you know, remember in dark Shore, we did the exact same thing queue for a rare mob all those things which just seem to happen far more naturally with how classic is set up now that said it also is the case that people know that about classic they now you know they know that now more than ever that that is the more optimal way to play classic i think also the more fun way to play classic but fun. it certainly is something that uh well is very nice it's very satisfying and yeah i found that to be just one of the one of the really stronger parts of playing classic in terms of other aspects, again, just the gameplay of Classic is something I still find to be really very engaging. I've had more memorable, you know, epic gamer. The gameplay in Classic is very slow. Like, it's very, very slow. It's like, what I, what I hate about it is like, as a warrior, if I aggro something, I know that I'm going to die. But I'm not going to die right now. I'm going to die like... 35 seconds from now and so you just have to either wait it out or try to run away and you know if you run away you're gonna die 40 seconds from now because they're gonna daze you and they're gonna get you so it's just that, that, that it's good but that's also so fucking frustrating i'll say that for sure it's so fucking frustrating moments uh you know just running around killing scorpids like today than i would have doing any world content in battle for azeroth why is that well it's, you know it's really simple stuff i was questing killing harpies with a mage was it a mage or a shaman i think it was a mage yeah it was a mage and uh, just because of the harpies like spawning in on top of us we had some really really tight calls you know i'd kill a mob i go loot it then another one would spawn on top of me we get caught out by surprise i concussive shot they you know f uh, like f uh, freeze it and all of that stuff just we're safe we're safe we're good so guys we're much good more easy for you to die because you have a more limited Shit. toolkit it just makes well basically what it does is it puts a large focus on the minutia of the things that you do with your limited toolkit and it's like it's more strategic and more tactical you know what i mean and like that's what uh that's what the game doesn't have now 
you know it's like it's it's not just strategic or tactical at all uh it's just you play you make mistakes you just keep going right and like for me that's kind of good because i'm a fuck up but overall i think that doing the right tactics and like executing a pull and it going well it's very fulfilling in classic and i think in bfa you can maybe get that out of mythic plus but because it's slower i think that the success and like the fulfillment is more accessible to more people and I just think that's really very satisfying indeed. It's fundamentally different to Mists of Pandaria gameplay or Battle for Azeroth gameplay, and I've covered the differences in those, uh, you know, I think it was in yesterday's video, actually. But yeah, just that gameplay loop, I have found to still be really quite satisfying. Just quests yep. completing them Same. feels more meaningful. And I suppose it's like when I'm playing a lot of the BFA stuff, you know, everything is so smooth and fast and streamlined that you kind of just feel like you're going on a treadmill and maybe you'll get some progress. Kind of feel you like you're going lucky. on a treadmill? Whereas like you're on with one. this, and look, this is something that could totally wear off, it did feel like I was actually progressing. It was slow, but I was actually progressing, and it made a lot of that content, uh, you know, actually just feel more meaningful to do. Now, that said, there still are some of those frustrating quirks left over, absolutely. Things like, say, the, um, you know, the crab people uh, that you need to get the eyes off near Echo Isles and them having a really low drop rate. Yeah, that stuff is kind of a little bit frustrating sometimes. I've been able... McConnell, are you heading over to SM? Yes, dude. Just making sure, okay? You don't have to get upset. I'm just asking a question. We'll deal with it just fine. I I'm can totally see why for a lot of people that would be a massive fundamental turnoff, but it's not been a big issue for me. And really for me, I've just enjoyed going through the zones, uh, we know. grouping up with other people, knocking out content, playing as a team, and just really doing that it's kind of funny like if i'm paired up with a priest i really feel the difference of being paired up with a priest as a hunter same goes for a warrior same goes as a mage that's definitely something that's quite satisfying with the differences in the class toolkits so far and i think it's it's less the class toolkits and it's more that you kind of have to use them like i regularly find myself kiting mobs around the place as a natural result of the hunter mechanics when i have no pet it's not like in bfa where yeah i stand there i've got no dead zone so i just destroy everything and i'll pretty much always win nope i think that all those little limitations that class has had in classic made it a little bit more it made you have to like play your class more and because each class had these different limitations like dead zones and mana restrictions and needing to feed your pet and like all of this i mean let's be honest all of this bullshit that you had to deal with it made i think that this is something really bad i don't even want to say this i don't want to say this but i'm gonna say it i think that the bullshit mechanics the classes had gave them class identity it's like, in a way, your class identity is what fucking annoys you about this class versus the other one. It's like, oh, I don't have seeds for my druid to cast uh, Rebirth. That's annoying, but it also gives class identity. Here, I do have a dead zone, and, uh, you know, ideally I want a concussive shot. I want to kite a bit. Maybe I could be thinking about stutter stepping with my, well, my swing timer, you know, for, like, my bow. So I suppose that's all just came together really just like a treat for me. It's been really good. And then there are some other things which I think are just benefiting from it feeling like a fresh slate. So going, doing your crafting professions or your gathering pro uh, professions, yeah, because Classic feels like a little bit more of a sandbox and a, a fresh slate, that stuff is just inherently quite satisfying. But I suppose that could be said for um, a lot of the, you know, the BFA stuff with professions as well. Whenever you get a profession reset in any expansion. Although that said, I would say that I think the sandboxy elements and just some of the economy of classic could be more complex and interesting than the BFA stuff. So well, if, if it's sandbox, people actually get something out of it, right? Because like if you're playing in a sandbox, if you make a castle in a sandbox, think about it like this. It's like you made that castle. But if you make a castle... If you go to Toys R Us and you buy a castle, it doesn't feel as good. You know, I, I don't know. To me, I guess, like, the, the idea of being able to make it for yourself and, like, do things like that and get the fulfillment out of actually completing the content yourself rather than having the game create win scenarios for you. If you create your own win scenario, I think that's more fulfilling in general.
I'm actually one of the things I'm the most interested to do in Classic is play the economy. I think that would be, well, for me anyway. It's not really for me. I'm not a big economy guy, honestly. Of playing the game. But yeah, that's pretty much my thoughts from playing Classic in a realistic yeah. environment where it's, you know, my character that I care about that I will be continuing on. The thing I'd like to just sort of end this on is this has clearly been a massive event. We need to see how, like, you know, how big it will be over time, but... Look, at like 5 in the morning here, maybe 6 in the morning, and like sure it was a launch day, it's a very big day, but there usually would be a large Twitch dip there. And that 1.1 million, like that was a spike, that was of not Of course sustained. it's not going to stay but, at 1.1 you know, one million. That wasn't sustained is, and I mean it was kind of funny to watch, it was like, wow, look at Asmongold go. Oh dear, he got disconnected and now he's in a 17,000 queue and he's went to sleep. What's that? Esvand, oh he got disconnected, he's in a massive okay. queue. Now he's went to Walmart to get a, like a, a blow up bed so he yep. can sleep beside his computer. Turns out, you yep. know, a lot of, I think a lot of the viewership draw people kind of got, well, they got got by just the servers going down and things like that um, over in the US, which would have hit the Twitch numbers. But then just also the fundamentals, it was still getting like 450k, 550k, 600k, like in a not very opportune time for viewership where you're basically just streaming to Californians, the East Coast people of, yep. um, or, you know. Well, yeah, don't like forget the, the Europeans. Like sleep. There's a lot of Europeans there too. And, you know, the middle of the Pacific. And, it's like know, half my UK viewers. People, it's super early in the morning. So I'm really going to be interested how this Twitch performance just stays over time. And really to what degree Blizzard will see this and think, Huh, right. This was bigger than we thought it would be. And I do wonder if... Uh, I, I would just, hope yeah, that's I the mean, case. If, when we would all hope that's the case the next expansion will they be taking inspirations from what they learn here uh, less just directly copying things from classic into the modern game i think that would be the wrong decision i don't think that's the way it should be done things should be made for the natural game or for the um, the live game that are he's right it's not like they should make everything in classic just the same way that it used to be uh sorry everything in bfa the same way it used to be in classic i, I agree but they need to use classic as inspiration and those are two different things now, i i agree with them on that are like natural for it but you know you can use classic and what works about classic as a design inspiration yep. and i wonder if classic does do so big much agree. better than they assume big it agree would, if that is the case uh, you know if we will see that be reflected in the live game and if so i wonder what those differences would be certainly something i'd love to hear your take on but overall, that's where I'm at. Uh, I am extremely underslept, so I need to get this video thrown together and then probably get some sleep. Really? That, that let me know what you thought about Classic, someone. though. Um, have you been playing it? Have you been watching it? I'd love to hear your thoughts, so let me know down below. And with that, thank you very much for watching this video, and I will see you next time. Okay. Okay. All right. So, Obviously, I think he's talking about what everybody was expecting them to talk about. Everybody fucking agrees with this.